My friends, welcome to this tutorial about creating games with Solaris. This is video number 44 and the third one of a, let's say, a mini-series about creating an inventory menu. So far, when we pause the game, we display the, this grid of items that the player has. So that was episode number 32. And then we display uh, a selection cursor that can be moved. That was episode 43. And in this video, it's time to get serious and we will actually equip the selected item when we press one of the two item keys that are X and V by default. Okay, so how do we do that? First, let me refresh your memory about this um, menu script, this inventory menu script that is starting to get quite big. But basically, uh, it's a script that returns a table and this table only has one function. It's this function create that creates a pause menu. Okay, and this pause menu, when it is redrawn at every frame, it draws the grid with all items on these squares that we saw and the selection cursor. And what is also important is that this menu handles uh, some events here. Um, some commands. So when the command right, up, left or down is pressed, we react to that by moving the cursor. Um, so commands are like abstract input events. They can be mapped to uh, actual uh, low level events like keyboard events or joypad events. So what we want to do is that when the item command is pressed. So we have item 1 and item 2. Um, these command names here, they are, they are a hard-coded uh, list provided by the engine. So you can find them here on the documentation of game in the section game commands. Or also you can find them in, all, in the documentation of uh, all on-command pressed events. But yeah, you have action, attack, pause, item 1, item 2, right, left, up, down. So you can see game commands are as, as a virtual game device that provides, that provides all these buttons. And like I was explaining, they are uh, actually mapped to real low-level inputs from the keyboard or the joypad. And by default, item 1 is X, item 2 is V. Um, if you actually need more item slots than the two hard-coded ones, well, it's also possible, but it requires more code. You will then have yourself, you will, you will then, sorry, have to handle yourself um, the low-level input um, corresponding to your new, uh, your, your new commands. But for this, for the scope of this tutorial, uh, it will be good enough with two item slots. The default HUD uh, also has two item slots. So, what we want to do when we press item 1 or item 2, which means X and V by default, we want to equip the item, the currently selected item, to the slot 1 or to the slot 2. So we can call this function that we will write in just a moment. We can call it assign item and it will assign the selected item to slot 1 in the first case and slot 2 in the second case. And that's, that's pretty much it, so we just have to write this function. But just a detail, um, in all of these uh, input events, we are supposed to uh, tell the engine if we consumed the event, and we kind of forgot to do that last time. So let's write a boolean handled, which by default is false, and we'll return this boolean. And whenever we react to one of the commands, we set it to true, and it will tell the engine to, uh, yeah, that we did something with the command and that we don't want it to be propagated to other menus or to the hero or whatever. Um, currently, the game is paused, so it it would not have bad consequences to to forget. Uh, to return true, but if you display a menu while uh, the game is running and you react to some comments, but don't tell the engine that you uh, consumed the event, 
then the, the same event will also be propagated to uh, next objects and you might have bugs like uh, you're trying to move in a menu or in a dialog box but uh, by pressing some, some directional key but the hero will, will also react to the same input uh, and of course this would be bad. So yeah, we return true whenever we consumed the event. Anyway, time to write that little function assign item that will do the job. Um, I might want to put it here after this local function, so it will be a nested function inside uh, the big uh, creation function here, inside the function that creates the inventory menu, assign item, and it takes one parameter, the slot. Um, and the reason why I want it to be a nested function here is because I will need the to access the game and I have access to game here. The other option would be to do like we did for this one, um, put the function directly in the scope of the script but and add a game parameter because we need to accept to um, uh, to access the game. So both ways are okay and you can do as you prefer. Okay, so this deserves a little command. This function will equip the currently selected item to slot one or two. Okay, so first we, we want to know what is the selected item. Uh, how do we know that? What we know is um, the current column and the current row of our selection cursor here. And we want the, uh, to compute from this row and column the index of our square. Um, because we will then get the name of the item uh, from that index in, in the items, item names list here. Which only has two elements but in your real project it will probably have more than that. Uh, normally you would have as many items as you have, uh, uh, you, as the number of squares that you put in your grid, of course. But here in this tutorial, I don't have enough examples of items that can actually be equipped. So, okay, assign item. Uh, let's get, let's compute the index of our item from the row and column that we know here. So, how do you do that? You can do the row multiplied by the number of columns plus the current column and also plus one because we want to uh, get the item name from that list item names and arrays in Lua they start at index one which is di um, different from most other programming languages um, okay, so now we have the item name. First, we can test if uh, it is nil. Well, if, if the item name is nil, it means that uh, we are selecting a square that has no item. So we have nothing to do. We just return. So it will be the case for all items that are, uh, for which we don't have any item here in the list yet. Maybe because the game is, under, is still under development and you haven't decided what you put in all your squares yet. Um, but yeah, okay, then we, we know there is an item. So we can get that item by doing game get item from its name. This will be of type item. So now we can use the whole item API. In particular, we can get the variant that the player has and check if the player actually has the item. Because if not, well, same thing, we, we, do, we do nothing. So we can also put a comment, the player does not have this item. Okay, so this case is 
about uh, well this square here it will contain the life potion because it's the second square but for now I don't have the life potion so of course I don't want to allow uh, the player to equip the life potion okay back to our function assign item I think we've done all the pre preliminary checks and now we can actually do the assignment and for this we have a function set item assigned there is also get item assigned assigned uh, again you can check the documentation it takes as a parameter one of the two hard-coded slots built-in slots one or two and the item so it's really an item variable and not uh, just the name of an item or nil to empty the slot okay so slot we already have it here as a parameter remember it's one in this case or two in that case and what do we want to assign what item well the one that we just uh, determined here and that's it maybe we want to play a sound you can play the throw sound to make it like uh, if you are throwing the item from the inventory square to the HUD icon okay I need to relaunch the game to test it let's see what happens if I press X yay it works and if I press V well I can also check empty squares nothing happens and this one it has an item but I don't have the item it yeah it also works as expected because nothing happens and now if I press V on the bow well uh, I'm also assigning the bow to the V uh, icon which is a little bit weird <laughs> we see the bow twice here and actually both uh, item keys will work they will both assign the bow they will both uh, both use the bow sorry um, so let's fix that what we want to do is that when we equip something to one of the icons well if that same item was already in, on in the other icon then we switch uh, the the icons okay how do we do that um, let's get the item in the that is in the other slot so slot is one or two so the other slot will be uh, will be two if the first was one or one if the first one was two one way to compute that is to do three minus slot um, because three minus one is two and three minus two is one if that's not very clear you can do a small if then elf if then else another way to do that in Lua is to do something similar to the ternary operator that you have in other languages you can do test if slot is one then uh, you, you want two otherwise one so the logical operator and and or in Lua can be used to do that kind of expression um, I wouldn't mind if you consider that it's um, not very clear <laughs> to read but it's just a matter of taste personally I like this uh, just three minus slots it's, it's uh, simple enough and uh, yeah so now let's get the item that was that is in that slot get item assigned to the other slot other underscore slot and if the other item is is actually the same one that we are trying to assign then uh, we want to remove it from that other sl slot and to replace it by whatever is on the slot that we are trying to change did you follow that <laughs> Um, if it takes a few minutes to think about it you I think you will agree that we want to assign 
to assign to the other slot the item uh, that is currently assigned to to the, the slot we are changing we are about to change so we can call get item assigned to the slot okay and this might return nil if the slot if the other slot was empty and and it will just work it will just assign a nil so it will empty the uh, the slot so let's test this okay so i have my bow i first assign it to x and if i take another item um ah okay yes it automatically assigned it to to x but okay now let's assign the bow to v and let's try to assign the bow to x and it worked my bow was switch switched with my uh life potion same if i assign life potion to x or to v it works uh maybe and now the case of an empty icon so i am assigned the bow to x and then i assign it to v that should put it to v and uh, make this one empty and it works um it might be that it doesn't work for you because there was a bug in actually in the item uh, icon displaying if you still have that bug um, don't panic <laughs> first you will find in the description of this video uh, a fixed version of item icon it's actually the same bug that we encountered in video number 39 so i apologize i apologized about uh, this small bug but um, you can you can also fix it you can either download it like i said from that link in the description of the video or you can just go to script hud hud icon .lua, and here in the function item icon rebuild foreground um, which rebuilds whatever is displayed on top of the icon you need to clear the surface here unconditionally so this is the fixed version already before the fix these two lines were here inside the if and you don't want that because uh, when uh, no item is displayed well we, you still need to clear the surface because maybe there was an item before um, anyway that's not the topic of this tutorial so i don't want to insist too much too much about that um, if you are not comfortable with just fixing applying this fix as i said you can just download the correct version from the description of the video and after that you should be able to switch your bow like this without any problem okay cool um yeah i think that's it actually item icon pause menu so we assign the item we tell the engine that we uh, want to consume the event we play the sound okay um so we could do something more uh, complicated we could create a movement to put the bow uh, on on the destination icon but uh, yeah with a movement instead of uh, immediately and to do that you would just uh, um, display the another sprite bow actually another bow sprite actually and apply a movement to that sprite and the yeah it would be a target movement uh, that targets the destination coordinates here um, the only difficulty is to compute the actual correct uh, coordinates um, because of origin origin points and everything so the computation is a little bit tedious um, so if you want to do this it can be a nice exercise um, you can ask for our help on discord and you can also find uh, some this kind of scripts in most of our games i i don't think i will cover that in in a tutorial because like i said it's it's too, the computation is just too boring and tedious to to explain like this in a video um it's just a lot of code and a lot of uh, complicated computations let's say so what would be more interesting to, um, to continue about the, this inventory uh, and we will do that in the next episode um, we want to 
uh, display the amount here of items that have an amount. We want to display the name of the selected item and uh, maybe even a description of the selected item in a dialog box. Let's say if you press the action key, so space by default, while an item is selected, we, we might want to display a dialog box that gives some information about what this item does. So yeah, I think we will make a fourth and last uh, video about the inventory to do these little improvements, final improvements. Okay, I hope um, this episode was uh, useful and now uh, you have, you can finally equip your items. Yeah, something we still want to do is to remove our temporary code that uh, does assign the life potion and the bow to an item icon automatically. Uh, we did this code, maybe you remember, just because, uh, just precisely because we did not have an inventory menu. So there was no other way to assign the items back then, but we just want to remove that line. So in bob.lua, you can remove the call to set item assigned. And in lifepotion.lua, same, you want to remove the set, set item assigned uh, row, um, line if you if you followed exactly the tutorials, the previous tutorials. Which means that now, uh, when you obtain one of the items, uh, it will not be equipped automatically. It would be strange anyway to equip a life potion like that like, automatically. You probably just want to assign it through the inventory screen. Um, okay, and this time that's it. Um, thank you for watching. Please join our Discord to, to help or be helped. And uh, yeah, we will happy to welcome you in, in both cases. Thank you all for watching and see you next time. Bye. That's better. <laughs>